Hello, hello everybody. So I have another video today. And then blah blah blah. <laughs> Can't speak. And today is about comparator logic. And it's about memory. And as always, it's about sort of selector panel type things. So let's just set time day real quick. Um what I have here is um a whole is something that is that can take in three inputs and then we'll output those three inputs later. And basically what this thing does is it stores an input, takes another input, stores that it takes another input, and it does that six times. And then we'll play it back. So and when I say play it back, I don't mean like as in it will play it back, I mean it will literally play it backwards. So the last input will be your first output and the first input will be your last output. Anyways, let's just uh, reset this really quick and um, I'm just going to sort of demonstrate what it does, but first I want to show what it's compatible with. This three, uh, three item frame design is compatible with this thing over here which is the um, 512 section selector panel. So basically, let's say you wanted to select a torch over there, a torch over there, a torch over there, a torch over there, and you were like running to it as an indicator lay, I don't know, whatever, something, and you didn't want to come back to the uh, thing every time, basically this would play it back for you. Um, so without further ado, I guess we'll just check and see how this works. So. If I restart it, if I'm just, I'm just gonna put like maybe a one, maybe a two, and oh bam, let's just start it at, you know, let's start it at eight. So here we have eight one one, and I'm just gonna input that. I'll should explain how all of this works later. Oh, I'll just turn down this volume real quick. Um, that's better. 811. Then the next one can be 11121. One, one. the next one can be 122. Two. Then 222. Two, two. And then let's make this 5, I guess. I think that's 5. 522 two, and I think we have one more input that we can do, and let's make it, let's just test the full range, go around in a circle a couple times, and make that seven, or six, I think that's six. Okay, now that I've done that six times, I've coded six inputs, it's going to be able to display those, and it's going to play them backwards, so the current first input that should be played is two, five, or four. Yeah, two, five, seven, two, five, seven. 257. Let's check and see if that's true. Two, then five, then seven. Awesome, perfect. Then we're going to do our next one. And the same button that codes it also runs it backwards. So this one should be 252. Two. I guess we did that. And then I think we did 222 two, two after this for this technically. Um, let's just check. And 222. Two, two. And then the next one is going to be maybe 221. Two. I think it's 122. Two. Wow, let's slide though. 122. Two. And then 121. One. And there's 121. One. And then the second to last output is going to be like 711. Okay, 811. Need that. And then that, that's the last input, and you hit it one more time, and it gets it back in ready position. And then you go to hit the reset button, and everything will be fine and dandy. So, um, I figure I'll explain this since that's what I'm doing, I'm supposed to be doing anyways. Uh, what this is, is it's just a whole bunch of memory cells. And these memory cells are comparator cells, and they memorize signal strength. 
uh, by doing this sort of thing. So there's six memory cells. Of course, you could make this longer. It would just be more confusing to wire. Since this is just a concept video, I just ex sort of explain the concept. So basically, there's a memory unit, memory cell, for six six of these inputs and for three high. And so the way that this works is this signal is currently allowed to pass through and that's because these are powered. Notice how nothing else is powered. This signal, this, why it knows how to select just this one is because of this thing down here. I have a bus sort of signal decoder, I guess you could say, some sort of thing. And basically this will just separate out the signals in each one of these spots. So when that block moves to the next one, this will unpower and this will power. And this next one will be ready to be coded. But as you notice, this cannot retain uh, signal strength right now. So if I just remove this, um, there wouldn't. There's nothing that's retaining this signal strength. So uh, I lost my comparator database. So basically, as this is going, since this isn't a solid block, it can't retain it. But as I power the next one, this will be powered. It will push it up, and everybody will be happy so let's just check it out so it remembered the signal strength and then it's unpowered that powered that and it's ready for the next one to go and it's just gonna sort of keep doing this so if I power this next one uh, bam. and then this this one's ready to go now this one's powered and this one's ready to retain its signal strength. Then this next one is ready to go also. This one afterwards. And these are all going to be on the same output. But basically you would change the signal strength by turning those. And they can turn around as far as they want. And that sort of thing. And then you're going to keep going. And you're going to do it until you get to 6. And that redstone block is controlling which one is powered and it's moving all along so this would be the last one so let's just power it and now this redstone block has gone on to the bottom you'll notice so it was on this top and it was powering all this now it's down here and it's basically doing the same thing and what I have here is I just have the redstone signal splitting up based on signal strength so because if the so I just have a quick little matrix where it depends on how strong the signal strength is. So obviously the signal strength is going to be 15 at this block. So 15, 14, 13. And then I have comparators that subtract about 9. So as opposed to having to go a full 15 blocks before you finally see differential, I just had it go to here because this is a good position um, about 4 it to power these pistons and when these pistons are powered it allows the signal strength to go through and it will power these torches um, then basically it would change as you hit it as you go along so you hit this the, the the code button it goes along and it um, as you can see this is this redstone block has moved from there to there that's changed the signal strength of this block so as opposed to this one being 15 now it's 14 and that is no longer powered it's just going to be the next one and even though I didn't change it it would have changed just because whatever that's how it works the um so yeah I keep going keep going and as you can see it goes down there it's changing um, the wiring is kind of messy, but if you were actually to do this in your survival world, a survival setting, it's so much. It's pretty easy to make it this and a lot nicer. You can bring this out a couple blocks, bring that out a couple blocks, and add some more logic in. Like after this, so like when we get to here, after this block gets up to here, which is the starting position, it would automatically reset as opposed to having a reset button. Um, this it's actually pretty fast. It's just that, look, this button still hasn't untriggered, and now I'm lagging. It just takes a while, just because my computer is really crappy. But it's not like this is a super laggy thing.
even though that's what it seems to be making out to be right now. Anyways, okay, now this now this redstone block is back in its original position. There's no output anymore. And you've started and you have your new input. Um, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna just take this reset button. Notice how because look, notice how everything is still up and all of these cells still have memory. As soon as I hit this button, oh bam. All of those get pushed down. It doesn't matter that that stays down, down because um, as you change the signal strength, it will update the piston and it will go back up. Um, so you just need to move it once. Uh, I mean, you could easily just move this up a block and have like a slime block and then a block or something, or just change it to a sticky piston so you don't have to worry about that. Or you could just change it. Where is it? I probably should have done whatever. But um, thanks for watching. This is just a quick explanation, as always. If you have any questions about um, this build or other builds that I've done and any suggestions on how to wire this better, feel free to leave any comments and I'll try to respond as best I can. Um, thank you for watching. I have hopefully. Hopefully you have enjoyed this 11 minutes that I have just taken out of your life. Anyways, thank you for watching. I'll see you again later. Have fun with your life.